Hi, I'm Lisa and welcome to my Oh So Gecko channel. Um, if you're new to the channel, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and there's a little bell somewhere at the bottom, I think. Um, so you can press that to get notifications of any new videos that are released. I'm super excited about today's tutorial. This is a pattern that I've been wanting to do for so long and finally it's ready. This pattern is specifically designed to be created on a domestic machine. We all know that creating wallets using cork or vinyl or any of the thicker fabrics becomes a bit of a problem when you've got so many bulky layers. This pattern has graduated layers, so you're only ever sewing through a couple of layers at one time. It makes it much, much easier when you're sewing cork or vinyl on a domestic machine. Okay, I can't contain my excitement any longer. So this is the traditional wallet. As you can see, it actually is a traditional style wallet. The type that we've seen for years and years. But obviously, if you've got a domestic machine, sewing this type of wallet can be a bit of a problem if you're using something like cork or vinyl. So let's have a look. On one side, we've got three card slots. And on the other side, we've got a coin pouch. Keep all your change in. Behind the coin pouch, we've got another card slot. And behind that, we've got a slot just for banknotes or cash receipts, whatever you'd like to put in there. There's also two hidden pockets, one behind the card slots and one behind the cash slot, which you can keep extra things in there like, I don't know, family photos or receipts, anything you need to keep. As I said before, this pattern is specifically designed for cork, but you can use vinyl, leather, craft hacks, any non-fraying fabrics. This is a beginner level sewing pattern. So if you're new to sewing with cork or new to sewing in general, it's really, really simple to put the wallet together. If you're new to sewing with cork and you're not quite sure where to start, then you can pop over to my group, Sewing with Cork, over on Facebook. It's a great place to ask questions, find out information and share any of your cork creations. Okay, I can't wait any longer. Let's go sew this traditional wallet. So for the pattern, you will need two of your main wallet outer in either your cork or vinyl. So one, two. You'll need one of your banknote slot, cash slot, whatever you'd like to call it. So one of those. We've got two of pattern piece three, which is your card stroke coin pouch backing. Pattern piece four, if you're doing the coin pouch, you will need two in cork or vinyl for your coin pouch and then you'll need three for the card slots. If you decide you don't want to do the coin pouch and you'd like to do card slots on both sides then you will need to cut six of pattern piece four and not five. Pattern piece five is the coin pouch flap and you just need to cut one of those. If you're doing the wallet with card slots on both sides and you're cutting out your six pattern piece four, then you don't need to cut out pattern piece five. Here is the wallet. So pattern piece one, the main outer wallet, that will be this section here on the back and the inside back of the wallet here. Okay, so it's one, two pieces. Pattern piece two, the banknote slot, that's this piece here. That all of your card slots and your pouch are mounted onto. So pattern piece three, the card coin pouch backing, this one here, that's this piece here. So I can show you. This is your pattern piece two and your pattern piece three is here which goes behind your card slots and here which goes behind your coin pouch. Pattern piece four the card slots and the coin pouch so we've got pieces one two and three four and five. Okay. 
Pattern piece five is the front here of your pouch. Taking your two pattern piece one, you need to glue both together with your fabric glue of choice. I've already done mine. With this particular glue, you'll find that you need to press it down quite a lot. We don't want any bobbly bits feeling through there. And personally, I try and keep my glue away from the edges where I know I'm going to be stitching. I'm making my wallet today with the coin pouch. So I've got my five pattern piece four and I've got my label. So I'm going to choose which one I want my label to go on. I think I'm actually going to choose this one at the top. I'm going to find the midpoint. Let's move these out of the way. I'm going to find the midpoint and I'm going to stitch my label centrally once I've lined it up. When I've attached my label, I'm going to take my other pattern piece four. So one, two, three, four, five pieces. One of mine is in natural cork to make it easier for you to see when I'm stitching. All five of these I'm going to stitch across the top edge using the measurements in the pattern. While I'm at the sewing machine, stitching my pattern piece four, I'm also going to take my pattern piece two and I'm going to stitch across the top and the bottom of pattern piece two. So here we are, I've sewn across the top and bottom of my pattern piece two and across the tops of my five pattern piece four and I've attached my label to one of my pattern piece four which is going to be on the front of my wallet on the card slots. So once you've stitched all of those make sure you back stitch really really well beginning and end of each one. We will need to go through with a lighter. I've actually already done some of these. You'll see we've just got these tiny little bits of thread let me move that out of the way, you can't see. Um, still showing, so we're just going to very gently burn those little bits of thread that are left behind. Remember this is a raw edge wallet so everything will be seen. We're not burning through to the stitches, we're just melting the ends of those threads ever so slightly. We're going to start with our pattern piece one which hopefully now is dry. If you look at your pattern piece you will see there are some marked lines on the pattern piece so we're going to use those line that up I'm just going to mark that one I'm going to turn it around and um, my pattern piece has just got a little bit wet I've got a glass of water here because it's quite hot today and um, I seem to have managed to put my pattern piece in the water never mind um so that and I'm going to mark out these two lines as well. I'm actually using chalk today because I'm working with cork. Um you will need to possibly change what marking tool you're using depending on your fabric. But also remember that because this is a raw edge product, there's no turning through, so whatever marks you make will be seen so make sure you use something that you can wipe off afterwards and make sure you don't make any snips or anything into your fabric because we're not turning this through okay Put that to one side right so i'm going to take this over to the sewing machine i'm going to stitch across the top edge and then i'm going to stitch a short line here across the bottom and I'm going to back stitch beginning and end really, really well on both of those. If you're using edge coat, you could edge coat now if you wanted to, but it may be a little bit difficult because obviously the sides and the bottom aren't stitched together yet. Um, so you could do it now or you can wait until later. Okay, so for the next part, I'm going to need two of my pattern piece four. This is for the coin pouch. So one of these will be for the front of the coin pouch and one of them for the inside. Let me show you again. So we need one for this piece and one for this piece here inside. So I'm going to take this one, which I know I've already set aside, and then I'm gonna use this one, I think. So that's my two pattern piece for the rest of these, my other three, including the one with the label. We're not using the one with the label. We're going to take one of our pattern piece three, so that one, it doesn't matter which one, 
and then I will also need my pattern piece five which is my coin pouch flap. Put these to one side for the moment and I'm going to be starting with my pattern piece five which is my coin pouch flap. So taking my coin pouch flap over to the same machine, I'm going to stitch down one side, across the bottom and back up the other side, back stitching really, really well, beginning and end. So taking my pattern piece four and pattern piece five, I've already marked the midpoints on both of them. So you can do that either using the pattern pieces which have the marks on them, or you can just fold them in half squeeze together and just make a mark. With your pattern piece five on top, that's the one that we stitched earlier on the three sides. We're gonna line those up centrally at those midpoints that we've just marked and across the top edge. Okay, so you'll see you should have the same amount of space either side showing behind your pattern piece four. Put that into place. Move my clips to the other side of the table. That was daft, wasn't it? Ooh. Okay, so now I'm going to take this across to the same machine. I'm going to stitch across the top of here, meeting up with my stitching from behind. Okay, so that's stitched across the top, joining those two together. I've trimmed up my threads and I've melted them with a lighter. Make sure you trim up your threads and you seal the threads with a lighter as you go. Some of the um, threads could get a little bit awkward to seal afterwards. So seal and, oh sorry, trim and seal as you go makes life much, much easier and keeps things nice and neat. So now we've got that, we're going to bring back our pattern piece five and you'll see that it has two little marks on the edge. So we're going to use these marks, line up our pattern piece five with the top edge. And we're going to use this mark here and transfer that onto our pattern piece, onto our fabric. Same on this side. Ooh. Okay, line it up with the top edge, make sure it's nice and neat, otherwise it won't be in the right place, and we just make a mark. So now, back stitching really, really well, beginning and end, we're going to stitch a line across here. There we are, so that's um, stitched across, a little bit wonky, never mind. Um, now we're going to bring back our pattern piece three. Okay, so I'm going to put my completed coin pouch flap over here, my pattern piece three, and I'm going to bring back the pattern piece. Okay, and again, we're going to mark the midpoint. Decide which way up you want this. I'm going to mark the midpoint at the top. Lost my chalk. There it is. Okay, my midpoint. And then again, you'll notice there are two more marks at the, on the sides. So I'm going to line up this top edge here and make a mark. So we'll bring back our completed coin pouch flap here. Now I'm going to line up the center point of the coin pouch flap with the center point of the backing. And then I'm going to line up the top edge of my coin pouch flap with the lines that I made on the pattern piece three backing. So I think that's about right. Take my clips. One, two, Let's make sure my cork doesn't stretch too much. Okay, now those are in place. I'm going to take a few more clips, probably don't need that many, um, don't need a hair grip. And I'm going to clip up out of the way the top layer of this coin pouch flap. So I'm just going to keep, keep these ones in place so we know that everything's lined up centrally. I'm just going to take this. So now that this is clipped out of the way, I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch across the bottom of this coin pouch piece that's underneath. Okay, so there you go. You can see I've stitched across the bottom here. Now, one side for a second. 
I'm going to take my other pattern piece four, the one that I'm using for my coin pouch, and I'm going to bring back my pattern piece here. And you'll see on the bottom edge of my pattern piece, there are two marks. I'm going to use those marks and mark some lines on either side. Now, using this, I'm going to line up the edges of this pattern piece four with the edges of my pattern piece four that's underneath and lining up this marked line with the bottom of my pattern piece three. Okay, and clip that in place. Okay, so if we turn this over, you'll see this is overhanging at the back. That's correct, that's what we want. So now we're going to attach our fastener, our snap. Now I'm using one of these plastic snap fasteners. You could use metal ones, you can use whatever you like. Um, I would be careful using anything magnetic because obviously you've got cards on the other side um, and we know that magnets and cards don't really mix fantastically well. Um, so I would avoid anything magnetic, but otherwise, whatever fastener you choose. So I'm gonna unclip my pattern piece five flap, but I'm going to leave the clips everywhere else. Okay, now I've got the midpoint marked on this, but if your midpoint has come off, it's easy enough. You can either try and fold it back together or you can use your pattern piece five, turn it upside down, line it up really, really well at the edges, okay, and mark your center point. Okay. So we're going to measure up a distance from that center point up from the flap and we're going to make a mark. That distance is in your pattern instructions. Okay, so I can see my mark, it's here. Um, so then we're going to take this, I've got one of these sharp, I think it's called an awl. It's a sharp thing. Um, so I'm going to find my piece glasses off. Anybody who's watched one of my lives knows it's always glasses on, glasses off. Um, and I'm going to make a hole at the point that I marked. Okay, make sure that works. There we go. I don't know if you can see that hole. Oh, fluff. Um, right, so now I'm going to take one of my fasteners, the one with the pretty side on the outside, and I'm going to push that through the hole that I've marked, making sure that I push down that fabric really, really well. Okay, so we can see that's pointing through. Now I'm going to take the male part, that's this one, okay, the little bit sticking out. I'm going to place that on there, this way up, and then I've got one of these tools, I'm going to place that over. So this side here with the cupboard goes on here. This part here goes on the front. Oh, we've fallen off. Let's put that together again. So we're gonna slide that on. Okay, you'll see that sits in nicely. And we're gonna squeeze really, really well. Okay. So for the second piece, this is why we need to make sure everything stays clipped nicely. To find where we need to put our second piece of the fastener, we're just going to press down really, really hard. And it should, if we're lucky, leave a mark. Now, I don't know if you can see that because of the lighting, because of the patterning on the cork, but mine is actually here. So now I'm going to take my pointy stubby tool thing. I'm going to find the center of that and we're gonna make a hole. Now, if this unclips now, it doesn't matter, it's fine. We just needed it clipped there, so as we made sure that this next piece actually goes in the right place, okay? So if you need to unclip this now, you can. In fact, I might do that. Let's unclip that for the moment. Okay, so this time, this pretty side, oh, I've dropped it. This pretty side is going to go on the back. Okay, so it actually goes on the back this time. If I can find the hole, where's the hole gone? There it is. 
might need to make that hole a little bit bigger. There we are, now we can see it. So we're going to push this through from this side. Okay, so that's on that side. Okay, so push that through. We'll put our other part to fasten on here. Again, this time, so this part goes on the bottom, this one on the top, on gently, so it doesn't fly everywhere. Just make sure that is on correctly and squeeze. Can't get it off now. There we are. Clip that back in place. sure that's even on the back that looks okay and personally I'm going to clip this flap back out of the way so now I'm going to take this over to the same machine and we're going to join these pieces together so if you look carefully which I'm hoping you can see at the side of our coin flap here you'll be able to see the edge of your pattern piece four that's underneath this one here okay so be able to see at the side there. So starting at the top edge here of our pattern piece four, we're going to back stitch really, really well, beginning and end, and we're going to stitch down the side of the flap, making sure not to sew this flap. We don't want to stitch on this. So down the side to here, we're going to back stitch really, really well at this point because this will be a stress point at the front of our flap. And we're going to stitch all the way down the bottom to the end, back stitching really, really well when we get to the bottom. When we've done that, we're going to come around to the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so here we are. So as you're saying, you might need to move some of your clips. You can see I've had to move some of mine. Just be careful that your pieces don't move as you're sewing. So if you can see, I've moved this out of the way, we've stitched from here. All the way down the side, back stitching at the bottom, back stitching here, up the other side, back stitching here and here, and up the side of the flap there. So to finish off this piece, I'm now going to take a rotary cutter and I'm going to trim off the excess from this side, being really careful not to cut my stitches. So um, I'm going to line up my ruler with the edge of my pattern piece fours, you'll see that this one is ever so slightly hanging over, that doesn't matter, it's absolutely fine. So we're going to trim off this excess here. On the left side only, we are not trimming up the right side, only the left side. There we are, so you can see I've trimmed that up, obviously not the flap, we're keeping that out of the way. But you now see this edge is nice and neat. Okay, so if you're working with cork, You'll need to now burn the edges. I've changed over to my kitchen lighter because my other one was not very happy. So I'm just going to burn all the little fuzzy edges. Oh, little thread there that I missed earlier. And now I'm going to take my glue or edge coat if you're using edge coat and we're going to seal this edge here. Okay, so now that's done, that is our coin pouch finished and we're going to put that across to one side. Okay, so now I'm going to take my remaining pattern piece three and my three remaining pattern piece four. We'll start with pattern piece three, let's put that out of the way. And we're going to start by finding the midpoints, the centre points, top and bottom. Next, again using our pattern piece, we've got our two marks on the side, so as we did before. We're going to use those marks and we'll leave a mark, make a mark on either side, lining up really, really well. Don't want any wonky marks. Okay, that's all the marks on our pattern piece three. Now I'm going to take one of my pattern piece four, that's one side for a second. Not the one with the label, that's going to be the last one that we use. So we're going to put that to one side for the moment. And we're going to choose one of these. Well, mm, this one looks a little bit more wonky than this one. So I'm going to put this one at the top, I think. Now we're going to find the midpoint of our pattern piece four, uh, which is really, really important. And we're going to line up 
the midpoint, the centre point of our pattern piece four with the top centre point of our pattern piece three, lining up the top edge with the two lines that we've marked at the top here. And we're going to clip across the top. Okay, and then if you want, you can clip at the side here a little bit, just to make sure it doesn't move. Now I'm going to take this across to the same machine and I'm going to stitch across that bottom edge. So there we go, that's stitched on, attached at the bottom, and I've trimmed up and melted my threads. So let's take the next pattern piece for, again, not the one with the label, we want the other one. We're going to bring back our pattern piece and you'll see it has a fold line. Now you have a choice, you can either fold at that line or you can just use the edges of that line, it's entirely up to you. This time again, we're going to line up our pattern piece and we're going to use our marking tool. Mine seems to have run away. So we're going to use our marking tool and make a mark on either side of our pattern piece here. Again, with our next pattern piece four, we're going to find the midpoints, top and bottom. Make a little mark, can't see, haven't got my glasses on. I don't think it helps the fact that it's very patterned this. It helps you to be able to see what I'm doing, but it doesn't help me without my glasses. Okay, so I know that I'm lining up with the bottom of my marks because obviously my chalk marker is quite chunky. Um, so we're lining up our center points and the top of this pattern piece for with the marks on the edges that we made. And again, I'm going to stitch across the bottom edge here. Now, keeping this and our last card slot, ooh, extra fluff. Okay. Now, I'm going to use the pattern piece and I'm going to make a mark up from the bottom. Or alternatively, we can use the measurements in the pattern piece. Turn this around, lining up midpoints, lining up the bottom edge of that. Now if I turn this over. Now, I'm going to bring back my coin pouch and I'm going to put both side by side. It's a little bit fiddly because I've got clips. Okay. And I'm going to line up my pattern pieces and just check that they are the same. Okay, so now starting at the top corner of pattern piece three, I'm going to stitch down the side here using the edge of the card slots as my seam allowance. I'm going to stitch down back stitching really, really well at each join here, all the way down to the bottom. Again, back stitching really, really well at the end. And then I'm gonna come back up the other side back stitching really well at each card slot. Okay, so there we have it. That's our card slots all stitched in place. So we've got one, two, three card slots. Obviously it's still open at the bottom. That's absolutely fine. Um, we've back stitched really, really well beginning and end for each of these, because obviously these will be under a certain amount of stress. So what we're going to do now is we're going to trim off the excess this time on the right side. So when we did our coin pouch, we trimmed off the left side. With our card slots, we're going to trim off the right side and not the left side. So that's all nicely sealed on that edge. So that's our card slots finished and our coin pouch finished too. Now let's start putting everything together. Okay, so I've taken my pattern piece and I've marked the center point at the top and then using the marks on the pattern piece I've marked one two three four points taking our card slot panel that's finished we're going to line up our card slot edge here with the two marks that we made at the side and we're going to line up the bottom of the card slot backing. 
So remember that's this red one. Okay, and we're going to line up the card slot backing with the bottom edge of the banknote slot. Okay, so we're not lining up with the bottom card slot, we're lining up with this one here. Okay, so now that I've clipped those in place, starting at this bottom left corner here, I'm going to stitch up the side all the way to the top, go to turn, and then I'm going to stitch across the top here. Back stitching really, really well, beginning and end. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side with our coin pouch. So again, we've already marked our lines. We're going to match up the edge of our card slot backing, the red bit, with the two lines that we made at the ends. And we're also going to match up the bottom of the card slot backing. So again, the red bit here, we're going to match up this edge here with the bottom edge of the banknote slot. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so there we are, that's clipped in place. So now starting at the top here, back stitching really, really well. We're going to sew across the top using the seam allowance in the pattern instructions to the corner here then we're going to pivot around and stitch down the side here only on the backing we're not sewing on the coin pouch itself okay we're just sewing down the side of the backing to the end here back stitching really really well at the beginning over here and at the end So now we need to close up and join the bottom of the backing with the banknote slot, cash slot. Um, this is a little bit fiddly, so take your time, don't worry about it so slowly. What we're going to do is we're going to clip the bottom card slot out of the way, fold it up, let's clip that the way and we're just going to tease this stitching a little bit just pull it slightly now what we need to do is we need to sew across the bottom of the red backing to attach it to our slot behind our banknote slot so just go slowly we're going to sew right the way across the bottom all the way to the end and then back stitch really really well beginning and end get as close to the end of each side as you can so we're going to do that on the coin pouch side and then we're going to come over to the side with the card slots and we're going to do the same thing again we're going to lift this bottom flap out of the way and we're going to stitch across the bottom here sealing this and sewing this to the banknote slot behind. Okay, so now the thing to note is it doesn't matter if your stitching isn't completely straight at the bottom here. It doesn't matter if we have to go slightly closer to the edges when we get to here. Nobody is going to look down inside and check your stitching. It's absolutely fine. Nobody's going to look down here in the card slot and notice that here in the corner it's not quite the same as it is in the middle. Nobody's going to see it, so it's absolutely fine. Just do your best so long as it is stitched really, really well here and that you've stitched really well beginning and end with your back stitching so as it doesn't come apart. That's absolutely fine. And now you'll notice, again, we've still got the bottom open of our coin pouch and we've still got the bottom open of our card slots. So we've got our finished interior wallet and we've got our pattern piece one. So my pattern piece one, both sides are the same. If you have different fabrics front and back, we want the inside fabric facing up and the outside fabric facing down. And obviously if you've got a directional print, you'll need it the right way up. So taking our interior wallet, what we're going to do is we're going to line up the edge 
of our banknote slot, cash slot, here, with the edge of our pattern piece one. And also, we're going to line up the bottom of our coin pouch with the bottom edge of pattern piece one. So let me show you. First of all, let's get it more or less in the right place. That's more or less right. I'm just gonna put a couple of clips in just to hold it. You might need to fiddle around a little bit. Let's put that there. And then I'm gonna maneuver this into place. So what we're going to do is starting at the top here, we're going to stitch down the side, let me move this up, on the banknote slot. So we're not sewing on the backing here, the red one, we're sewing on the natural cork banknote slot, cash slot that's here. Okay, so we're starting at the top corner, back stitching really, really well at the beginning because obviously this is going to be under a lot of stress. We're going to come all the way down to the bottom here where our banknote slot ends and we're going to back stitch there really, really well. Then we're going to sew past that to the corner of our outer wallet, keeping our seam allowance, which is in the pattern instructions. We're then going to pivot, sorry, so we're coming down here, we'll pivot, and then we're going to sew across the bottom back stitching really, really well here where our two pieces join. And we're gonna sew across the bottom all the way to this corner here where it meets up with our stitching that we did right back at the start on our main outer wallet. Okay, again, back stitching really, really well at the end here, again, because it will be under quite a bit of stress. So we've attached this side all the way down the side and across the bottom. So now all that's left, and you can see that's all stitched together. Now all that's left is to attach this side. Now you will notice that the outer wallet is longer than the internal wallet section. That's correct. It's supposed to be like that. Don't panic. It's absolutely fine. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it this way. Now we're going to pull this interior wallet and line it up with the outside edge of the outer wallet. Okay, so I'll show you that again. So here's our outer wallet and I'm gonna pull this interior one and I'm gonna line it up with the outside edge. I'm gonna clip it in place for the moment. We might need to wiggle it a little bit, but it should be okay. Let's line this up. You might need to pull it quite a lot, it's absolutely fine. Let's clip that there. Okay, and like before, I need to line up this bottom card slot edge with the bottom edge of the outside wallet. So now we're going to start in this corner here and we're going to clip that down. Okay, and we're just going to work our way along. We need lots of clips for this. Okay, clips, clips, and more clips. Clip that edge there. Pulling this down, we want that clipped onto there. Okay, now you'll see we've got like a little bubble here. That's correct, that's what we want. Okay, we want that because we need to be able to fold our wallet. And we need to be able to keep things in here. Okay, and so for that space, we need that. So. I'm going to clip right on that corner and hold that in place. Let's move these down a little bit. Okay, right, so it would be really easy if you're a confident sewer to start at the top here, sew down the side to the bottom and across to the bottom, the same as we did on this side. However, if you're not quite so confident, what you can do I'm going to do is I'm going to start in this bottom corner here and I'm going to stitch up the side all the way to the top back stitching at the beginning here 
back stitching here where we join to the banknote slot and back stitching at the end. The reason I'm doing that is because then I can remove my clips and I know that this isn't going to wiggle anymore. Okay, it's going to be stitched in place and it's not going to move and I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so you'll be able to see I've stitched this side from top or from bottom to top and I've back stitched really, really well. Now I don't have to worry about that coming loose. I can start either at this bottom corner and stitch all the way across, joining up here, or I can turn it around, start here at the edge and stitch across the bottom here. Remember to back stitch really, really well, beginning and end, and line up really carefully with your center stitching that's on your main outer wallet. What you'll now need to do is get a damp cloth if you've used chalk and obviously wipe off all your chalk marks. Um, burn off any extra little threads that might be lying around and then you will notice, especially if you've used cork, that um, it might need pressing along that centre seam just to keep it in place. So we've got our coin pouch which is now all stitched up at the bottom. We've got our one, two, three card slots. We've got an extra little sneaky card slot in here. We've got our two additional pouches here. And then we've got our space for all our banknotes. And there we have it, one traditional wallet.